Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So here's the next deck profile update. This time it's on zombies. So this is different from the danger zombie build that I put together a while back. Actually, this one actually has the new support of being Jack of Bolon. And by doing that card, it's actually got some uh, a lot of good interactions with the zombies. So I just really wanted to try it out. And honestly, I really like what it can do. So I decided to work my deck around that. Still doing the super poly tech, of course, and as well as instant fusion to make full use of those cards. That way I can extend and just basically add pressure to my opponent. Of course, I'm still running, running Reverie of the Warlords. That card is still pretty good, so I figured why not. So anyway, this deck doesn't have any dangers in it, just pure zombies. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so starting off with the main deck, three copies of Shirnui Solitaire. Uh, it's just to get you access to your zombie tuners, uh, but also your main target is always going to be Unizombie. So Unizombie can modulate levels, dump zombies to the grave. So, really good at just getting your play started, but it is vulnerable to uh, cards like uh, Impermanence and Valor. So, but like I said, Jack of Bolon actually has some really nice interaction with this sort of deal. That way you can keep pressing on and basically just like kind of start from square one. Uh, moving on, two copies of Doom King Balor Drock. Against the Mirror Match, though, this card cannot chain against itself, sadly. Even if your opponent controls one of his own, he can't chain off his effects. And you can't use this effect during damage step. But overall, he's really good for disruption. Uh, if a zombie monster activates an effect, you can negate that effect, or you can banish one monster on the field in the grave, so... And it's once per chain, too, so that's pretty nice, but both effects are hard once per turns. Uh, two Necro World Banshee, just to give you instant access to your, uh, zombie world, and as long as she's on the field, your opponent can't target or destroy zombie world. And that includes the ones on your opponent's side of the field, too, so, like, again, mirror matching, this card can be pretty nasty. Uh, two copies of Globe Bloom. Uh, zombie world's out, you ban and this card is sent to the graveyard, you banish it, and you get to special summon a zombie that's level 5 or higher, so it gives you access to your Doom King or Vampire Furline. Next up, two copies of Jack of Bolon, so this card is really cool. Uh, so here's how the card works. You discard one zombie monster, special summon this card during your opponent's main phase. Quick effect, you can target one zombie in either graveyard, special summon that monster, but banish it, uh... Uh, when it leaves the field, then banish this face-up card until the end phase. So this is a good way just to kind of keep them alive. And also, uh, you can only use each effect of Jack of Bolon once per turn. But again, really powerful extender. And just a good way to kind of like keep this card safe. So, yeah. One Next up, one copy of Vampire Furline. You know, just a good way to pump up your zombie monsters. Just by paying your life points. So it's a really good generic zombie monster. And let's not we forget two copies of Mizuki. I was going to run it at three, but I was like, you know, two is just fine. Uh, you don't really need that much revival, especially when Doom King kind of brings himself back all the time. And, of course, one copy of Gozuki. Uh, also has some pretty cool interactions. So, yeah. Uh, definitely something to look into. All right. So, moving on to the hand traps now. Uh, for hand traps, three copies of Ash, you know, just for standard disruption. And, of course... Three copies of Bell, only because it's a zombie monster, and it also dodges cards like DD Crow and Called by the Grave, because those both of those cards are actually being used a lot this format. So if you need to be able to disrupt your opponent and need to dodge a card like Called by the Grave, well, a Ghost Spell can definitely help out with that. And so, yeah, like I said, and the fact that they're both zombies, you can chain off Doom King Valor Drop just to banish a card for free. So, yeah, it, it's really nice. All right, so next, moving on to the... Uh, Spells and Traps. Running three copies of Zombie World, you definitely need to bring this out as quickly as you can. It turns everything on the field into zombie. And the fact that it just makes it live for super polymerization and rivalry, uh, that's just really nuts. Three copies of Instant Fusion, uh, just to give me access to certain extenders and ways just to kind of like help break boards. So yeah, Instant Fusion definitely helps. But the, your main board uh, wipe is going to be super polymerization. While Zombie World's out, you basically make Dragon Necro with this card and so on. So, like, yeah, just a great way to deal with, uh, like, problematic monsters. Uh, two Called by the Grave, uh, since, you know, I felt found that three was kind of a brick, but it's just to dodge certain hand traps, so, yeah, Called by the Grave definitely helps. Still gotta run Terraforming, One for One, and Foolish Burial. Those are my general one -ups. And for Trap Cards, I'm only running two copies of Rivalry. Three was sort of bricky, and, you know, I need to be able to, like, get something going so yeah rivalry is just a good addition and if you happen to pull off the rivalry lock with zombie world then yeah you basically just won the game at that point all right so that's it for the main deck now moving on to the extra deck extra deck's pretty standard running two copies of dragon necro now 
if rather than just the one. I took off the El Shaddai window temporarily just to see like, uh, just to see how well this plays out. And if eventually I might bring it in depending on how popular Shadals become. But yeah, for now I'm running the Dragon Necro just because you know, again, you just requires two zombies, and the fact that he produces a token uh, can definitely help out when you get the game and all. Uh, of course, still got to run one Starving Venom. You know, a lot of decks are still playing Dark Monsters, so Starving Venom also works. Mud Dragon of the Swamp, which acts as for a Super Poly and an Instant Fusion target. But one thing I do like to use about this card, like if I open up with Instant Fusion and Unizombie, for example, I like to bring this out first, called Dark. That way none of my Dark Monsters can be targeted. And then I can use Unizombie's effect without worrying about Effect Veiler or even Impermanence. Uh, next, 1000 Ice Restrict. Uh, just a good way just to get a monster out of off the field and basically go into Link Karibo, so yeah. Uh, for Link Monsters, running two copies of Vampire Sucker, still definitely want to run this at least at two. Uh, you could get away with one, but I think two is still perfectly fine. She gives you draw power and also the fact that she can revive zombies on your opponent's graveyard uh, is really nice. One Avenger Savior, it's a good way to power down your opponent's monsters by sending a zombie to the grave. So, good way to get access to your Jim King Ballard Drug as well. Uh, Link Karibo, of course. Barricade Board Blocker, another form of protection for your zombie world. As, and I always like to have it um, co-linked with Nightmare Phoenix. Good for back row removal too, but uh, the, again, the cool interaction is that they're both co-linked. Neither one of them can be destroyed by battle. So, yeah. Next, one copy of Boral Sword Dragon, you know, just for an OTK strategy. So, yeah, Boral Sword definitely already a one-card win condition. Red Eye Zombie Necro Dragon. Uh, Overload Savage for negation, and of course, Cypher and Lord Omega. Definitely a good way just to rip cards out of your opponent's hand for the turn and just kind of like, yeah, just kind of like give them some card disadvantage. Alright, so that's it for the extra deck. Now moving on to the uh, side deck. Uh, for the side deck, I'm running three copies of Joel and Lockbird just to deal with like search heavy strategies like heroes and spirals. Uh, don't really like those decks, so that's why these, this is there. Three, drive down into the grave. I really love using this card, uh, just because the fact that you get to look at your opponent's hand. It, of course, he gets to look at mine, but if there are cards that I want to be discarded, uh, this card really works well, and both players get to draw one card. But it's really good just to kind of like get rid of necessary pieces on your opponent's hand, so like if they need like a certain card, and you just send it to the grave, yeah, it, it, that could be pretty troublesome. Uh, three, Dark Ruler, no more. Mo more of a going second card, since, you know, rivalry really sucks going second so uh so like it's just something i like to side in same thing with twin twisters you know definitely want to deal with that and last but not least three copies of evenly matched so yeah that's just the general idea behind that so these are mainly these are mainly going second cards and all that good stuff all right well that's all i got for you guys today hope you guys enjoyed this back profile and as always i will catch you guys again next time